You're on the mic with JD, an extraordinary show for ordinary people. Let's go. In this episode, we're going to talk about how we build up a successful team. Now, I seen a post earlier and I took a screenshot of it because, you know, the words of it, you know, kind of caught my attention. And it says, leadership is not about being the best. Leadership is about making everyone else better. That's pretty powerful right there um, because, you know, at the end of the day, there's no I in team. So it doesn't matter who individually achieves more if the team is not winning as a whole, right? So that's what this segment is about. And then it got me thinking again, back in Hawaii, we used to run a build them up campaign, try to make everybody in the organization great, push them to their limits and, you know, set them up for success, right? To be who they wanted to be, where they wanted to be, when they wanted to be, however they wanted to be it. So when you looked at our organization, we had uh, all the best Seaburn Warriors. We had um, all the uh, Soldiers of the Month, NCO of the Month. We had uh, 33 Graduate Air Assault School. If you ever known about Air Assault School and what you have to do to achieve that, three Uh, graduated from Jungle, uh, the operator training course uh, in Hawaii. Um, So we had a lot of success, a lot of wins um, because of how we built the team and the culture that we created um, by trying to make everyone better, not just individual accolades. So we'll talk about a few key things um, that'll help you be successful in building your team. So in the army, we have commanders. Commanders are the leaders of the organization. And through that commander, you must have a mission statement. The commander must have a mission statement, right? And this mission statement is what gives the organization purpose. So by creating this mission statement, you know, it requires uh, members of the team to think about, discuss, and come to agreement about a few different things like what are we trying to get after as an organization a team and individuals so a good team discusses how each member of the team or even the group collectively understands that mission right and understands that statement and understanding the meaningfulness of how it's implemented as a team so the statement it doesn't have to be long doesn't have to be drawn out it can be short precise it needs to be written in a language in language that everybody understands. So pretty much it needs to be in layman's terms. Everybody needs to understand the mission statement. So the mission statement gives the team a set of guiding principles. I want to transition now into goals. You know, goals give the team the real target for their activity. Goals should be something worth striving for. They need to be achievable. You need to be able to see the results and your team needs to see those results. So with that said, goals need to be very specific. They need to be measurable and they need to be achievable. So once realistic goals are put in place and you know they're measurable and they're achievable, you know, the the next thing that really needs to be defined is the roles and responsibilities of each team member. You know, it's important uh, that each team member uh, knows exactly what's expected of them. You know, without these expectations, there's no accountability. You know, you're not building trust um, without setting these expectations. So once those expectations are clear and people are meeting these expectations or exceeding these expectations, the trust in the organization starts to increase and people start winning. Next, you're going to need the norms for your teams or a set of rules for the teams. So these are your guidelines for specific behaviors. You know, you don't need a lot of rules. 
You just need rules that will help you guys work well together. Uh, but every everybody on the team should agree to all these rules. That way the responsibility is shared and nobody you know, and everybody holds each other accountable for those rules. And here's a few examples of some rules. I mean, it's not all encompassing, but, you know, some specific ones are like be respectful, you know, share your own experiences and opinions, you know, have thick skin, uh, one speaker at a time. So don't talk over each other, you know, keep a discussion, keep it focused on the topic. Don't go down rabbit holes and then respect time. Like if you're in a meeting and it's an hour meeting, stick to that hour. Um, those are some great rules to follow. Uh, just a few, but there's many more out there. Now that your ground rules are in place, now it's time to transition into the decision making process. You know, there's different ways that decisions can be made. Um, it's up to the team to figure out how they want those decisions uh, to be made, right? So, you know, will decisions be made, you know, by everyone? And, or will it be on the team leader to make the final decision? Or will the team just take a vote and do it through democracy? Um, you know, it's, it's super important to figure out where that decision comes from because that gives everybody the buy-in to go along with the decision that's made. So there are two simple characteristics that back a good decision, one being quality and the other commitment. You know, quality decisions, they're logical. They're supported by good reasoning and good information. And as far as commitment is de being demonstrated, you know, it's taken an active backing for that decision by every team member. So each team member agrees uh, with the decision and is committed to being carried out because everybody agreed on that decision. So everybody is bought in. So you have quality and commitment. That's your decision making process. So here's three simple rules um, to building a good team. So one of them being Listen respectfully and respond with positive interests and ideas from each team. Help create an environment that encourages team members to share ideas. Share creativity, you know. Uh, and then don't hide conflicts. If something is going on or something's not right, get it out in the air, get it out in the open up front so you're not wasting time uh, dealing with something that's probably gonna get tossed out anyways, or you're not fully committed to. And lastly, I'd like to share a story um, utilizing this model uh, that I just talked about. You know, utilizing mission, goals, roles and responsibility, norms, decision making, all of that. So uh, in Hawaii, uh, my commander and I wanted to uh, figure out a way how to keep people, um, keep people safe, right? And we didn't want incidents in our organization because it's easy to get in trouble in Hawaii because you're stuck on an island and there's nowhere to go. So um, we came up with uh, uh, 71 days of incident free will get you an extra day off every month, right? Or every time we hit 71 days. So the mission was, you know, to um, go 71 days incident free um, and then get the day off, right? Everybody has to be incident free from the commander all the way down to the newest member of the organization. So the goal was get everybody 100% incident free um, for 71 days. Everybody's roles and responsibilities were to police each other up, to ensure that everybody was doing the right thing all the time. Um, so um, one way that we did that was every week we would bring a countdown calendar out and they would, you know, the unit would see we're getting closer and closer to achieving that goal. 
and then it would become everybody started to pitch in with roles and responsibilities and and using these ground rules to say hey don't waste you know don't do anything stupid this weekend don't do anything stupid call us call us call us if you need help reach out reach out uh, and they started peer policing right and helping each other out and and, and looking out for one another it might have been for selfish reasons but they wanted that day off you know so um those were the rules right anybody you know breaks that anybody gets a speeding ticket whatever and hits that blotter that day was gone and we would start over um and then you know the decision making came down to the team and the individual to do the right thing you know understand right from wrong and just thinking about how they were going to let the team down if it was them they got caught and when we started that we never had another incident during our reign as the command team we went months almost a year uh, that we had left without an incident because of that mission statement and everybody um, achieving that goal. Uh, everybody knew their roles and responsibilities to look out for each other. Everybody stuck to the rules and good decisions were made. And I would definitely say we built a successful team uh, out there in Hawaii and we had a great time doing it.